Outside, so I really wouldn't know the places that all the people go because I've been on lockdown quarantine. It's been a whole lot of things that I ain't even seen. Like, where are the people who used to go to the bars? And what happened to the traffic? Where are the cars? <laughs> oh my God, it's been crazy. A lot of chicks then had babies. Since the world got shut down, now it's back open. And now a lot of dudes are just hoping it didn't really happen, but it did. Now you got the next 18 years to raise this kid. <laughs> Hey, you know what I did? I was chilling at the crib coming up with ideas, and then I started thinking about some stuff that I ain't thought about. How about a pancake from the Waffle House? No, that wouldn't work. Maybe I can put the sleeve on a sleeveless shirt. Wait, no, that's stupid. Don't do it. Maybe I can turn some ice into some fluid. Then it's water. See, I'm getting smarter. The rhymes that I'm doing are just getting harder. Like, what's the isosceles triangle? I just wanted to rap about that so I can dangle and hang it in your face to know that I'm better. Hey, you ever sweated in a sweater? <laughs> hey, then why they really call it that? Hey, since you're listening, everyone, welcome back. Hey. Welcome back. Hey. Welcome back. Hey. L. Duncan, you, you had no idea, did you? I you did didn't have know. an idea, yes. You did? You I was just knew? in my head, I was singing along with you. I was just singing like... You can sing if you I want. I am the one that had a quarantine baby. What? He knocked me up. I was like, I'm not a lady. What? So I just decided that I spend my time looking fine, pregnant as fuck, but I don't care because he's gone now. He's out and he's fat. Okay. What do you know about that? Nothing. I did not nothing. Stop right now because I did not know six she bars. was going to take it I've got it six bars in me. Six full bars. I did not know that you were going to. OK, L. <laughs> hey, welcome back to the Black Excellence Spotlight. <laughs> now, check this out. We got a very special guest in the house with us today in the trap house. We done put out some of our uh, fancy art and everything for you, L. Duncan. very fancy. Welcome to the 85 Appreciate South you. Show. And you gave me your best Capri Sun. Come on, man. We got to make you feel at home. It's ice cold. Come on. It's well done. This refrigerator works. I they see. think it's just a prop. See, you got the candles. How going. you been, first I've been of all? I've been good. I've been good. Yeah, I, thank Clearly, you've had a quarantine, baby. I did have a quarantine, baby. I have a coronial. He's a little five-month-old guy. Is that what they call yeah, him? Yeah, the coronials. Coronials. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to all of them. A whole, gen whole them. generation of people that were like, you know what, F it. Like, we're going to be here anyway, so we might as well just have babies. Wow. So, uh, I don't advise it because you have to keep them well past the pandemic when you do want to leave the house. They're still there. They're still all there. The time. Hungry. Constantly. <laughs> <laughs> he eats a lot. He's like 23 pounds. Really? Yeah, pound. So you had a son during this pandemic? I had a son, yeah. That's crazy that it lasted this long that you could have a whole ass baby. An entire child. Like, conceive have and now he's still five months old and we are still in this come pandemic. on yeah shout out to your husband man he over there smiling like hell right now he did this on purpose I did that it was premeditated <laughs> look he's he like cheered. swish look swish he over there one shooting time jump. <laughs> one and done <laughs> nah man we definitely have a lot of people on our show you know a lot of fans that you know love sports and that just happens to be your avenue right now yeah it is yeah i'm a sports center anchor i work at espn first of all thank you. you know just for a lady just go you know going over there putting it down in a male dominated yeah. field yeah it's cool i like it because um friends would tell you that i'm confrontational in one way and that is when it comes to sports 
So I get paid to kind of do the same thing I'd be doing at a bar, which right. is clowning dudes and putting them in their place, you know, wow. about sports. So. When did you fall in love with sports? Little kid. My whole family is very sports oriented, so we were actually huge Braves fans growing up. I played baseball. Uh, my mom knows more about sports than maybe any man I've ever met, and so uh, they just fostered the love of sports in me. I wanted to combine those two things when I got older. Mm. Yeah. You know, you have a very familiar voice here around Atlanta. I used to do radio here, yeah, with Ryan Cameron. Shout out to Ryan and Cameron. What up, RC? The OG. The OG, yes. On V103 in Atlanta. Yeah. Um, so what was I'm, that like? Yeah, I mean, it was dope. I, I met Ryan. I uh, was doing the two live stews. So if anybody knows. Shout out to radio, them, too. The stews, yeah. yeah. You're dropping them already. Early. You see that? Yeah, I know. I know. You see that? You see these names that I'm yeah. dropping? <laughs> um, I was I was an intern on their show, and I met Ryan. I needed a job, obviously. I was broke, and I was working at a hair salon, and I would take my lunch break and go do radio with the stews. And so I met Ryan Cameron through them and begged him to give me a chance uh, on his show. And he was like, listen, I'm coming back. Uh, he had left to go to D.C. for a little while. He's like, I'm coming back. I need a traffic reporter. He pays like $20,000 a year. I was like, that much? <laughs> um, <laughs> it was a lot when you were, like, you know, washing hair for a living. I was um, just going to ask you, what was your, uh, your career like at the hair salon? Well, yeah, receptionist and washing hair. Okay. I washed Kenny Rogers' hair once. Hey, that's Kenny, dope. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah, dope. Yeah, I was like, what are these in the hair? Like, got it, got it, the hairline. That's where you can tell the work gets done. Um, and it was a Buckhead salon, so we saw a lot of that. But uh, yeah, and the rest was history. He gave me a chance to do traffic, and, and we, you know, we had a, a nice rapport for 10, 11 years on the radio here. That's a nice run. Really nice run, yeah. That's dope. Yeah. So what was it like just, you know, being a part of the hip hop scene in Atlanta, just seeing it change so many different times, yeah. and you like right there at the number one radio station as it's happening every morning. Somebody there. Yeah, I was like right on the like the beginning of the AG takeover, the Alex Gitawan takeover, okay. right? Like he had just basically owned like the Velvet Room. Yeah, yeah, he had just like upgraded from owning parking lots, and um, you know he wasn't that removed from being a valet. I mean, I think that's what's so remar remarkable about AG's story, despite the fact that like is he still pulling that bullshit where he sells T-shirts outside or sells shirts outside of the club for $100 and tells you you're know. not up you to know the You know the world been shut down. Code. Everybody gets a clean slate. Do they? So I he's selling T-shirts out. Alex, are you still pulling that? He would tell you that you were underdressed and he'd be like, but I've got a shirt here for you for $100. And he would make you change into a collared shirt that was from like Walmart um, so that he could get you for a hundo because you drove all the way out to the Velvet Room and your ass was not turning back around. So it was a nice hustle. Especially uh, if you had a parking spot. You remember the parking? Oh my God. That was crazy. It was awful. Have to cross the street. Um, so yeah, no, it was, it was cool. I, I don't go out anymore here. I've heard it's changed quite a bit. Um, but it was, it was dope sort of being, I, I, I was a little young for like Esso. You're young for Esso. Esso is not, was not your thing, right? Like that's not. Caught the end of it. Yeah, yeah. So I was much more a velvet room compound. Yeah, I didn't really like go. going out too tough back in those yeah. those days. It was a lot going on in the streets and too many rich people in the club just throwing <laughs> away money. That was that was insane to me. I remember having a party with Alex where he had Diddy coming and he sold a table next to Diddy to some dude for like twenty thousand dollars because the guy just wanted proximity to Diddy. And yes, that excess of money was wildly uncomfortable for someone like me that was making $22,000 a year. Yeah. Um, but it was cool to sort of see, you know, what Atlanta was like then compared to sort of what it feels like now, which is a little too Hollywood for my taste, right? Like it feels like... I wanted to get a little bit more Hollywood. Do you? Just a tad bit way? more. Where you riding down the street and you see a helicopter with a camera and they shooting like a car chase scene. Got you. Yeah. You want... O.J. Simpson light here in Atlanta all the time. Yeah, but on, it's over when they say cut. Got you. Yeah. That makes total sense. Yeah. <laughs> all right, back to traffic, everybody. <laughs> now, where are you originally Atlanta. from? Atlanta. I grew up, I say Atlanta adjacent. She's giving my, my husband's giving me the look. He's from East Point, so he can really say Atlanta. I'm from. East Point. You know where Marietta <laughs> is? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm from the town next to it called Powder Springs, Georgia. Okay. A little suburb, and someone will say, ooh, you know where that is? Yeah, it's you couldn't catch a ride to Powder Springs. But hell no. No, it's at least 45 minutes from here. Yeah. It's the country. Um, but I moved to the city when I was 22. 
and was there until I moved uh, to pursue my sports career. See, that's what people don't know, though. All the cities that's around the city lit, too, bro. Palace Springs got their own drum out there. Marietta. Yep. Ackworth. Bro, you don't know about them late nights in Ackworth. Shit get real around there. We used to have this place called the Dirty Bird Cafe. You can guess when the year was. I'm aging myself. And uh, it would... It would go down in there. I mean, Man. it was just like some little place in a strip mall, but we would go in there. They had Jamal Anderson's pictures everywhere. And we would just go in there and they would, you know, play his stupid song once a night. And like everyone would get a free round of shots, which was bad because we were 17. They would just serve underage kids. It was fantastic. It was fantastic. Yeah, those were the days. Those were the days. Yeah, man. What happened? <laughs> We got old and responsible. Man, now look at you. You are responsible and professional mm -hmm. and working at Sports Center. What's this whole experience like? Yeah, it's cool. I mean, I get to talk about sports for a living, and um, and that's cool. But I think that most importantly, I'm trying to, on a serious note, uh, represent. You know, have representation because I it's knew important. I could do right. I knew I could do this because I saw Robin Roberts do it, right. and uh, and so I'm trying to to pave as many ways as I can so the next generation of like young black females that want to, to your point, exist in male dominated spaces feel empowered to do it. And right. so- uh, What advice would you give them? Yeah, to, to use all of the things that make you uniquely female to your advantage. I think women are sort of conditioned to believe that everything that they do is antithetical to what they need, right? Act like a man, be tough, don't use your compassion or your emotion or you'll be deemed as weak. But I think that women are so good at things, we overcomplicate it. And it's not so complicated. Speak up mm. for yourself, advocate for yourself. Um, use your voice and, and most importantly, lean on your intuition and all the things that make you uniquely female because it's the one thing we've got over men, you know? And, uh, and it's, it's been weaponized, but it's, it's a strength. That's dope. You just, you really said a mouthful right there. Yeah. I've been known to do that. I don't know if you just summoned all the women to form Voltron or what, but I just felt like that needed an extra moment. You Unite. Really? <laughs> Use your womanness. I was yes. like, what is she saying yes. right now? All of it. You know. Look outside, Listen. there's going to be women flying and shit. If you've got womanness, then you know what I mean. You know. I, I don't, I yeah. have no idea. You recognize it. I have madness. <laughs> What's madness involved? I can break shit, <laughs> open shit, <laughs> lose shit, <laughs> fall asleep fast. That's your superpower? <laughs> at this point, <laughs> you wouldn't believe how good I am at leaving. <laughs> like, all you have, you don't have to tell me twice. I'm ready to go. Always. Uh-uh. We can leave as soon as we get there. So it's, are you one of those people that, like, are already sort of thinking of your excuse to leave, or do you Irish goodbye? Like you're good. I'm just so going. I'm so used to leaving. I don't even make excuses. Nice. I just leave. You just go. What do I need an excuse for? You don't. You're a grown ass man. I'm not making no excuses. I came. I didn't say I was gonna stay. <laughs> you, so you do like a drive by appearance. Most of the okay. time. Then people should understand that. Sure. Yeah. You're a busy man. Exactly. So what would what would predicate you staying for a long time at something? Like, how good would that event, party, or scene have to be? It would have to be fun. Okay. Like, not like people doing stuff fun. Like, this is just fun. Gotcha. Yeah. Fun. I think that's one of the most underrated things. Where people overlook fun. Like, you get, you turn into an adult, and then you get all serious about life, and you forget to have some fun. Yes. Gotta have some fun, man. That's why it's so dope to have people like you that can come through and do, you know, that are actually in the field that they want to be in, doing what they want to do, and having fun with it. That's the key to life, Lose, <clears throat> is, is sheer joy. Like, I know it sounds super corny. I, I was talking to a colleague recently about this, and I would like to believe, I'm joking about superpowers being womanist, but I'd like to believe that my superpower is trying to be a joyful person and bring joy, joy to other people. So yeah. um, I appreciate being here because I love your show, and uh, I think what you guys do here is great. I love how much it's grown. Sort of seeing. Come on. Well, you guys are like what Atlanta is about, right? Creative people coming together, right. believing in something, speaking to a certain group of people who has largely been ignored. And then those people rally and they give you your flowers and they respond to you and to see what you guys have done and how much you're growing. I think it's amazing. So I'm really glad that you had me because we've been planning this. You know, I've talked to Chad months ago. We've been planning this for months, the ability for me to come and hang out with you guys. So I you do You need to this. be here. Because yeah, you got to come and give us some updates. Who you, you know think going to get Julio Jones? Ooh. I saw something the other day and I was, like, I, was like, this makes, I was like, this makes so much sense. 
no, not Dallas. Julio wants to win. He, Julio wants to win. Um, to and he needs to win soon because we all know Julio got about 25 games left in. And I don't know how many. That's probably going to take four seasons to get to. But he don't have much time left with that foot. Uh, it could be very interesting if the Packers can't work this thing out with Aaron Rodgers. They make a trade for Julio Jones and they give Jordan Love to the Falcons. The Falcons then maybe have their heir apparent to Matt Ryan. They give up Julio, they get something in return. So I could see that happening as a way to pacify Aaron Rodgers. You give him Julio and you get rid of the dude that made him feel some type of way. Mm. Mm. Stranger things have happened. Stranger things have happened. Do you happened. want Julio to stay? I, I want you to really think about it, though. I know you Listen, love Julio. This, yes, that's what I was saying. But do you think that his better days are behind him? No. You still think? Yes. You think yes. that if Julio Jones is on the Falcons this year, yes. they're, they can win a championship? Julio is not the problem. I know that. He is definitely not Matt the problem. Matt Ryan is a problem. He has done everything sure. and some other shit Absolutely. that they have asked yes. him to do. Absolutely. No, he is definitely not the problem. But as a fan of Julio Jones, sure. I understand. He needs to go. He has given his best. Yes. They have wasted his talent. He don't owe Atlanta nothing. He and he will forever be one of the greats. He made one yeah. of the... That catch in the Super Bowl was one of the greatest catches that I've ever seen. It's as if Julio was trying to will that team to a championship. Right. But Matt Ryan was like, not today, devil. Not today. Right. I am going to snatch defeat from the jaws of victory. Right. And that's exactly what happened. He right. got in the way of what should have been Julio's moment. He was going to be an MVP in the Super Bowl. Right. And you're right. He don't know Atlanta anything. He's he given tried us to a lot wait of it out as long as he could because I think he thought that Matt would go first. I think he's realized that they have chosen Matt Ryan. He has to Good, go. Good, bad, or indifferent. And right. there's nobody else coming. Like, even if they trade Matt Ryan next year, who's coming down the pipeline? His 45-year-old backup just retired. They don't even have any other quarterbacks on the roster. Oh, you got me fired up now. That you, that's what happened right. when you talk about the Falcons. I'm like, I just don't. It's Yes, about any Atlanta sports team. It's, everything they do is nonsensical. I don't know why we keep coming back. It's like we're sadists. It's like we enjoy the pain. Why else do we keep doing this? I keep looking at my phone like, oh, my God, I can't wait to watch the Hawks tomorrow night. Why? <laughs> The Hawks have been winning, though. You can't stop. Sure. Hawks. Yes. The Hawks have been on their shit. Yep. That's exactly yes. what I'm saying, bro. The yes. Hawks be yes. catching strays because of the Falcons, no. just because they're the same birds. No, it's because... It's because... It's because they're in the bird family. They're not the same birds. I don't want the animal people to be like, they are not the same. <laughs> they are in the same house, a family of birds of prey. It's just the, it's the battered sports fan of me that knows that this is all a setup. It's like the, the rug gets pulled out, and the Hawks steal one in New York. Just like the Braves stole a couple in New York. Right. And then came home and never won another one. That's like, exactly that's the where, point, where, where I'm at with this whole Matt Ryan situation. He's like, you know, like you have a party at your house. It's that dude who's drunk, but he's not, like, obnoxious. He's just uh, annoying as hell. Yes. Like, bro, who friend is this? <laughs> who you here with, bro? Like, that's where I'm at with Matt Ryan. It's like something about him gets under your skin. And I think... Listen, he's a nice guy, right? He like, prob we don't know that. He's, that's, yeah. that's, that's debatable. Yeah, I mean, I know enough people that know him that know, like, he's, you know, he's, he's like, like, what, what was Beaver Cleaver? Like, but he like might a, not be know... nice to me, though, after he watched this and be like, yeah, that's how you feel. <laughs> so I get it. Oh, trust me, he's been catching bullets for me for a long time. So if he's mad at anybody on this couch, it's me. I just, I get tired of the idea that he's elite because Matt Ryan has only ever been able to do well when he has had a fantastic running game. And I feel like Michael Turner was completely, he's the reason Matt Ryan was so good at the beginning of his career, right? Like, <sighs> and then Devontae Freeman, like, it, he always has to have a thousand yard rusher to do anything. His right. better days are behind him. That one year was an anomaly. And the fact that Arthur Blank just doesn't think that it's fathomable to move I on from him is got, insane to they me. They gotta be related or something. Cause nobody, and nowhere you, else yeah. could you have a job and you fuck up that much and they let you keep your you job. You just keep coming back. He is like the Homer Simpson of quarterbacks. <laughs> he really is. I always wish like a lot of like small inconveniences happened to him. Just on some Atlanta shit. Like I hope he always in traffic. I hope his Waffle House ain't never hot. Like, just, you know, I hope his lemon pepper wings ain't never really lemon peppery. Just all types of small inconveniences for Matt I love Ryan. that you think he eats lemon pepper wings. He probably does. I hope he Where does he eat them at? 
at the stadium. <laughs> That should be everything you need to know. Yeah, he, he's definitely not in an American deli. He probably passed. It's an American <laughs> deli within 20 minutes of wherever he lives. What does he live? Who knows? We Rich know. people, Atlanta. Buckhead. They have an underground Atlanta that, like, they just drive and then you go under and it's like a whole world. I don't know. I just heard about it. This is it. just some things that you've heard about. Probably. I was gonna say like, like underground Atlanta. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> like, it's some, it's some other shit. I don't know. I believe it. I don't know where anybody lives in Atlanta. Every time somebody invite me over their house, they got to tell me where it is. It don't matter if I've been there for five years straight. I need you to text me the address. I don't remember. Are you a um like a, for you put a like what, you put like ways and stuff like you like follow Google. GPS to the letter I, of the I follow law? Google because Google know exactly where your ass is. Cause you know why? Cause Facebook told them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That makes so much sense, doesn't it? It yeah. does. <laughs> Google is right. You, Waze is cute. Police to the left. Yeah, okay. The police already made a whole video talking about how you can turn that shit off if you want to. Waze has you going through like parking lots, and I just think it's completely unnecessary to save 26 seconds. Tell you what made me get Waze, though. Remember they had that promo where you could use T Pain voice? Yes. That's, that's how they the got it. The best. Me. They have, um,. Big mom energy here. They have like a Cookie Monster one too. That's actually quite cute. Really? Yeah. No, yeah. see, that's some shit. I can right? I, can, I can definitely cookie. see myself busting a little left. Cookies to the left. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Police to the left. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be hard. It's not bad. <clears throat> so, who are some of like, who are some of your favorite teams to cover these days? What's keeping it interesting over there at the workplace? Yeah, I mean, well, the pandemic was tough, right? Like. Right. Um, so thank God Tom Brady bailed from Boston because that gave us. Is that a what he did? To talk about yeah, man, he bailed. I think he left. Yeah, he bailed. I think he kind of like it was emotional. It's like when you walk in and you catch your girl sitting on a dude's lap, like that's what we doing. All right, bet y'all not the only team in football. Tampa Bay really likes me as a person. He left and he won the Super Bowl and he was like, <laughs> yeah, whatever. Yeah, that was. I mean, but that was nuts. You didn't ever think he would really leave Boston. I, I did. Mean, really? Because that whole team loyalty shit is old school. It man. is. Nobody does that. It's a business. Go get the money and the happiness. You, you've been abused up there and all that was cold ass weather. They don't listen to your opinion. You got to go where you appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, it, I think, um, you know, the Nets are keeping us talking. The Lakers, per usual, are keeping us talking. And finally, the Cowboys. Here's a fun fact. It is so much better whenever people say things like, you know, oh, you guys really push this or you push that or you all want the Cowboys and stuff like that to be good. Hell yeah, we do. When the Cowboys are good, people watch sports, right? When the Knicks are good, people watch basketball. You want some of those sort of flagship tent pole teams to be really, really good. So right now we're doing well because we are seeing our big teams succeed, you know? Like who's, who, who, what's your whistle? Who gets you, uh, who gets you going? In the, the sports world. The WNBA. Right? I don't care nothing about what happened. I just like to see those ladies. Balling? Balling. I want both teams to win. That's how crazy it is. I feel like a father. So a tie? Like, I'm like, they fun. all won. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Participation trophy? Yeah. Now who's got the big mom energy? Every you going to bring time, orange slices like out of the, the game? Highlights. Every time a lady get her shot blocked, I'd be like, she didn't have to do her like that. <laughs> <laughs> she ain't right. Right, because I saw one chick, she like got her shot blocked by a tall ass sentence, like slammed down a little bit. It just. It felt abusive to you. It felt abusive. I, you know, shout out the WNBA because they're seeing record numbers right now. They're seeing some As of their best should, ratings in like, years. Yeah. They should let the rim down a little bit so them ladies can dunk. <laughs> They don't gotta let the rim down. The ladies but I'm can saying, dunk. It's only like three. I want like I want it to be like nine and a half feet, <laughs> so they can at least be like hitting the rim or something, bro. You know. Let them do some globetrotter stuff, where like one of them gives them a boost. Like you're allowed to like run up the backs of people. Maybe just the second half or something. <laughs> like what are they trying to prove shooting on that high ass rim? I'm a man, and I'm like that shit high. <laughs> you, you gotta be a big motherfucker to shoot this. Like, I'm not one of them short guys who's like, I can play ball real good to prove y'all I can overcome anything. I was like, that shit ain't for me. That's for tall people. It's easier. <laughs> Look at all these layups the little guy's doing. Nobody wanna see that shit. 
<laughs> Little guys will lay up you to death. I'm like, go play with the they girls. Do. <laughs> and then they'll call him a student of the game. Man. You know, they'll be like, technically, he's fantastic. He Fundamentally. Great fundamentals. Great fundamentals. Man, get this you know. bullshit Team out guy. Of we're not on the high school uh, state championship. This is for entertainment. Nobody want to see no wide open ass layup. You pay, you make millions. You better attempt to dunk. <laughs> Fucking layup. It's like when people will be like, you know, I, the Princeton offense is just so compelling. It is not. Watching dudes just pass the ball 30 times and then someone nah. take a spot up jumper is boring. I don't even understand the whole concept of sports. Who told old white men they know everything about sports? <laughs> Who? How can you coach LeBron James? <laughs> Frank Vogel. This motherfucker was literally born to play basketball. <laughs> Hey, LeBron, you know, man, you don't shut up, Gary. <laughs> when did you play? In the 50s? <laughs> Everybody had on Chuck Taylors when you played, Gary. <laughs> Those little hot pants, too, the short shorts. Exactly. Yep. Well, that's why, you know, when you're a LeBron, you're not listening. Your coach is not doing any of that stuff, right? Uh -uh. Your coach is mostly telling everyone else what they need to be doing. That's what I'm saying. Like, how are you going to listen to Luke Walton? Yeah, well, no, well, he we wasn't going Luke. to, which is why we he wasn't saw Luke there. In action, we saw Luke. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Luke was on the team and then just started wearing suits to the game. And like, <laughs> I, I, I can do this. He retired himself. <laughs> I've heard the coach say a lot of stuff. I remember most of it. I don't know. It's just the dynamic of that is funny as hell to me. Yeah, I um. I think that, do you think, what do you think about the Lakers' chances this year? Like, who's your basketball team? I mean, the Lakers always have a chance. They have that LeBron guy. Yeah. They do. You're not concerned about the injury? What injury? His ankle. <sighs> Don't believe that, L. Duncan. First of all, if you're going to be over there, let me give you some inside okay. scoop from, from the street, L. Okay. Nobody's, I got my L. Duncan notes right here. Okay. But let me give you some perspective from the street. Okay. I just said LeBron James was born to play basketball. Mm -hmm. You think an ankle injury will stop him? Yes. I don't. <laughs> I don't. No. I think if he's healthy, you know, no. L. Duncan, if you look at every team, they all got about, like, two or three superhumans. Sure. That are made from a completely different fabric. Yeah. Like LeBron James. He's a dog. Like Kawhi Leonard. Mm -hmm. Like Ben Wallace. You get what I'm saying? Like, they made from, like, another substance. Sure. Or like Shaq. Like, they just built for yeah, this. Yeah, all gravitas. Yeah, I felt like if, the, if everything was on the line and LeBron needed to go out there and win the game, he could. Maybe that's just me no, believing right. in crazy shit, but he has a great team. He's a clutch shooter. You he think got that the other dude that can score 50 whenever he get ready. Anthony Davis? I just call him the other dude. That's yeah. my nickname for him. Oh, the other you dude. You get what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, old boy. Yeah. Hey. Oh, what you call Hey, it? yeah. Hey, uh, shout out. <laughs> eyebrows. Yeah. The, you know the, eyebrow. The brow guy. The brow. Yo. Yeah. Uh, you think that they can take down the Nets, though? The Nets? Yeah. The Nets can take down the Nets. All it takes is one argument. They don't even like it's each other. It's a wrap. They don't even like each other. Are you, do you find these big, giant, mega super teams to be compelling, or do you find it to be? Every no. team should be a super team. I agree. That's I what hate they had these purists the that keeps, when, yes. Yeah, when Michael Jordan had Scottie Pippen. Sure. And it was the team that you wanted to see. Yeah. You knew Paxson was going to step in and hit the three on somebody. You get what I'm saying? It's like they had the Pistons. They had the San Antonio Spurs and the, and the Houston Rockets. They, these, all these teams had at least two to three superstars. Yeah. That's what it takes to have a team. I totally agree. I hate these purists that, that think that somehow they're, you know, soft or weak because they want to go play with them. I'm like, what are you? These dudes yeah, grew up you... together. They spent the night at each other's house. They're right. real life friends. If they want to be on a team together, it only makes sense. I totally like agree. Like my mom, sit by your mom. Right. Why wouldn't we be team? We play cousins. <laughs> like, your mama came <laughs> to my house and cooked for your family. And like, you see this on Instagram. So it only makes sense. Yeah. I don't like the whole idea of like pay one dude a lot of money and just put whoever on the team. I hate that shit. Got you. Hello, so basically, people. like what these golden parachute type of contracts. Yeah. 
What the Lakers did with Kobe for many, many years. They gave him that money, but they couldn't put anybody around him towards the end. Nobody wanted to play with him. Yeah. He was just a hard dude to deal with. Yeah. A legend. Yep. Michael Jordan cried. Did you see that? I did. Yeah. I heard that uh, Kobe had keys made. He'd had to have a special set of keys made from every arena in the NBA because he would beat the crew there. So, like, his people would have early access so that he could get there at 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning to shoot. And he would do this at every arena across the country. Like, that's how dedicated he was to his craft. And this is well, well, well into his career, you know. Yeah. Post multiple championships. Still the guy at 5 o'clock in the morning at the gym shooting. Yeah, that's different. That's what I'm telling you. It's, you you're think right. the ankle gonna stop that? That's fair. Look at that full circle, Lowe's. Full circle. I hey, see you. Bring my full name circle. Out to people down there. Shoot. Come you wanna on, come? Now. You wanna come do a sports center? Come on, y'all need to at least let me be up in the HBCU division. <laughs> Division. They got like 11 games that's going to be televised next year. Sure do. Come on. Let's go. I'll, I'll do it. Okay. Hey, what's up? Welcome back. It's your man, Carlos Miller. I am out here at the HBC. Hold on. Man, hot dog good as hell. <laughs> man, who dare to make this hot dog? Bro, y'all got to get down here. The game is tight, but the food is off the chain. We're out here in Tallahassee, Florida. Back to you, L. Duncan. Go Tigers. <laughs> Perfect. I'll just pitch that. I'll be like, next time we need a food correspondent, then let's call up Carlos. Atmosphere. Atmosphere. You know, like oh, the people like who show up before the game. Yeah. Be like, it is nuts out here yeah. on the infield, L. Right. I'm telling you, they got the tailgaters out, the grills are out, and guess what, L? Them girls are out too. I'll get back to you in a minute. They, <laughs> they wilding over here. You're even holding the IFB. Yeah. Well done. Nice. I'm reading this off the screen. I, I put see. this in my screen. I like <laughs> And they are wild, too. I love it. Yeah. That's Bookmark dope, it. man. I yeah. really appreciate you coming through. Yeah, here, man. man. I like Just know, anytime you, you want to come through and vent and talk sports or yell at our cameras, because you don't get to do all that at your job. You yeah. have to be professional. Somewhat. Somewhat. Yeah. I, I, I'm most proud that on a very classy show called yeah. Around the Horn, I was able I love to that show. Right? That does the most nice arguing. Isn't you can it? Do. It's Michael, very classy. What do you think? Listen, yeah. listen, listen, L. I don't know what you've been on this morning, but I'm telling you, LeBron's ankle is not a problem. You can sit there all you want and try to say that he's not built for this. This boy has been playing basketball since he was seven months old. And then my little arrow gonna point up. Yeah, and then and you're you gonna get respond. points, yeah. I watched the show. I like show. it. But all, yeah, so but on that classy show with real journalists, I dropped a Trillville reference. And I was very, very proud. I did. I said some cut. And uh, and my producer, who is Caucasian, was like, is that something that is going to get us in trouble, what you just said? And I was like, no, it's just a Trillville song. And he was like, I repeat. Is that something that will get us into trouble? I was like, it was like a top hit. <laughs> and we're good. <laughs> and so that's what I'm bringing, Carlos. So if I can do that on SportsCenter. Hold up. We got to talk about women shooting their shot there, L. Duncan. Yeah. So you saw your husband just chilling. Yeah. And you was like, what's up? Pretty much. I looked like I was on a date. Uh, I was not. I, but I looked like I was on a, like a double date. How and you so look like, like you're on a date? Because I was with a dude, right? I had met a friend there who was a guy. And then he had invited um, a couple friend that he knew. So we were, you know, it was guy, girl, guy, girl. It looked like we were on a date. So I saw him. I thought he was cute. I tried to get his attention. How you he do that? Look, oh, it was quite right, you over, that he game. over there right now. Literally, like, this is exactly how it was, because my table was facing this way, and he's right there. And so I'm trying to get his attention, and I'm literally like. <laughs> <laughs> and it's, it's so embarrassing that the guy that I was with was like, you're embarrassing yourself. I was like, he won't look at me. And he was just like, so I recognized that we both knew the DJ. What up, DJ Tech Technology? I pretended to not know Tech. I walked up to Omar's table. I said, excuse me, um, what's the DJ's name? And he was like, oh, that's Tech. I was like, thank you. That was just so that he would finally see me and be like, she's cute. And I think it worked. And then I had the DJ introduce us. I was like, who's your friend that you were talking to? He's like, that's Omar. I was like, does he have a girlfriend? He said, I don't think so. I said, is Alana. Does he have a girlfriend? Fellas, no. you always supposed to say no. <laughs> what the fuck is this? I think so shit. Bro, I'm mad now. Like, what do you, I think so? <laughs> Go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. I just was trying to catch the fellas up. That's true. No. And uh, he introduced us. And yeah, we, the rest was history. We bonded over uh, 
the Tree of Lights, like the tree festival that we used to go to as kids in Atlanta. That just goes to show you, bro, that dudes would do anything <laughs> for a date. At the Tree of Life? Yes. Tree, tree of Lights? Yeah. Tree of Lights. <laughs> <laughs> he out there having fun and shit, telling his homework, bro. Y'all got to start going to this shit. <laughs> Man, there's so many women out here, bro. Baby, know it. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> um, yeah, but shoot your shot, cause this idea that you know you got to sit around. If I would have tried to wait on him, he would never would have saw me. And he didn't. He noticed that I looked like I was on a date. He never would have come up to me. And frankly, I would have been sort of mortified if he would have. For I real? Think it's, well, I think it's gross when men hit on women when they clearly are with someone. Like, I've been- What if it's not a date, though? Yeah, but- like, You think but I'm you about to let your boyfriend stop me <laughs> from <laughs> meeting my soulmate? <laughs> Whatever. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> this is Atlanta, though, bro. Dudes will walk up to you in line at a movie theater. You holding hands with your girl. He just walk up on the other hand. You with buddy, you with... <laughs> Y'all together? Oh, no disrespect, homie. No disrespect. No disrespect. Um, dudes will hit on you while they're holding their girl's hand. Exactly. Here in Atlanta of, at Lenox yeah. Mall. Yeah. With the red hat on. I remember you still all these years later. He was holding her hand as she's pushing a stroller. I'm assuming his son in it. And he was like, what's up, Red? Hey, Red, Red. What's up, Red? I was like, she... See, just like right you weren't you. on a date, that could have been his older sister. Holding his her old hands. She emotional. She been going through something with Gosh. the baby father. So he was like, sir, let's get out. <laughs> so he was whispering just out of respect for her? Like he was trying to she, be... She been with the baby. She don't need Got to you. hear no lot of hollering. Got you. <laughs> just keep the tone low and right. I got you, okay. And plus they might have been talking about family business, you know what I'm saying? Got you. Anything. Okay. It ain't never what it looked like. I feel like you could write a book of excuses in Atlanta. Not excuses. Well done. I'm just saying, I live in Atlanta. That's and I think well that there's a lot of misconceptions going on out here in these streets, and it don't get enough light. Okay. That's exactly why we have this platform. Yeah, so it's you guys aren't actually light. dogs. You're, we're just misunderstood. No, it's not necessarily that we misunderstood, but I think some women just refuse to just... Put you know, up with your bullshit? Not put up, but that's the thing about it. <laughs> There is no universal bullshit. Every man got his own bullshit. Sure. There's some dudes out here who's so faithful that they woman is like, I wish you would find somebody to just get the hell out of my face. <laughs> there are women like that? There are women like that. A lot of women don't even want relationships. See, the women who don't want relationships, they have the guys who are trying to be good, and they like, that shit boring. Yeah. And then we all meeting the wrong people. Yeah. I've been saying that. It's self-destructive behavior. Exactly. Yeah. Then plus, then you know, you got to factor in a lot of women not shooting their shot. Fair. Making themselves seen. That's no, that's totally true. It's ego. Exactly. Put the, you t take the ego out of the way. Go shoot your shot. You think he's cute? Holler at him. Yeah. You know. Especially if you're ugly. Okay. <laughs> you never know. You never know. <laughs> you got to take chances. Hey, excuse me. Hey, hey, I'm just saying. I know it ain't your first choice, but I'm an option. What would, so if an ugly girl came, hit, like, came up and, and shot her shot at you, what would have you like looking past whatever you deem to be ugly and saying, okay, I'm a, I'm a, I'm it a depends on what, see, some people can be like, see, sometimes it's not even just ugly, you just have a new look, like a unique look. Sometimes you can be so ugly that you're attractive. That because is true. Because you just look different. Like a like, French bulldog. Exactly. So like, ugly, it's cute. Like, I don't know if I like this shit, but I'm, I'm still trying to figure I'm it intrigued. out. I'm intrigued. Right. <laughs> and then if you're around long, you start like, oh, I like the sound of her voice. She got nice fingers. You start factoring oh, wow. in shit, and then you don't even know. You be done fucked around and fell in love with somebody unique. And they be fine as hell to you. See, that's the ain't no that's universal real. attractiveness. We all fucked up to somebody. That's yeah. what I learned. Totally. Hell yeah. So someone, a uh, wise man, told me that a long time ago, right? You show me the prettiest woman in the world, and I'll show you a man tired of sleeping with her. Exactly. <laughs> I believe it was after Halle Berry got divorced for the second or third time. Yeah, it was sad. I it's know. Amen. I it for. I've been on her. She been tweeting, all reckless. Oh, she's feeling fine in her 50s. I'm hey, loving Halle Berry in hey, her 50s. Hey, I'm, I'm, on, I'm on her radar. Are you? I got to be. Yeah? 
I'll get. Are you a DM slider? Nah, I ain't gonna do all that. Okay. I don't go nowhere. I ain't welcome. Gotcha. <laughs> gotcha. But if she she slip up in LOL or something. Don't follow me back. I'm in there, because what you following me for? Right. I got privilege now. Yeah, so. So as soon as she follows you, then like, then you're allowed to slide in the DMs. That's like a, that's a heads up for you. L. Duncan. God got me. Got you. I'm covered. I feel that way. If he get me that far, yeah. he know what I do. Oh, yeah. He know what I do. He I'm, sets you up and you knock him down. That's it. But if, but if it ain't happen, <laughs> but if it ain't happen like that, he ain't ready for it to happen. He don't know how I'm gonna act. So what I'm doing in the meantime is I'm I'm preparing. Gotcha. You. you get what I'm saying? Okay. You're what if prepared. it's not Halle Berry? What if it's a Halle Berry type? Got you. Like God Jennifer Lopez. God might not want that for me. Okay. Jennifer Lopez slide in my DM. Right. Hey, Lowe's caught a little clip of the show with L. Duncan. <laughs> I love the show. <laughs> Come on. Come on, Jenny. Is that your dream girl? Uh. Uh-uh. Who's your dream nah. girl? I don't even, that don't even apply no more. <laughs> Knocked her off years ago, L. Duncan. <laughs> She's somebody's wife now, L. Duncan. <laughs> Knocked my dream girl off three, four times, L. Duncan. This comedy game been good to me. <laughs> If I don't never do, the next dream if girl. I don't never do nothing else, L. Duncan, I, the game been good to me. Ah, uh, yes. I'm talking about. <laughs> hey, we now, that's love the funny book man. you gonna want to read. Yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> the game been good to me. You understand me? With the T. Good. <laughs> if he, if God yes. say no more ever for you, Carlos, I'd be like, thank you, Lord, for everything you done did up to this point. Let me do this missionary work so I can get back in your good graces. Also, Jesus wept. What? <laughs> Telling you, L. Duncan. Do you think that's the quality that women love most in a man is humor? Uh-uh. What do you think it is? Because you could be hilarious, but if you don't have any money, you got it. Hey, you can laugh with a woman, but just know she ain't gonna never respect you. That's the first thing you gotta have as a man. You gotta be financially stable, or you'll never be taken serious by a woman ever. Cause all the fun she could have, that's cool, but ain't nobody trying to laugh up in no goddamn dark and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Giggling on a futon. Yeah, man. <laughs> But that's what I'm saying. They'll they'll laugh with you, but just know that situation ain't you're not winning in that one. So humor is very important though, because there's so much shit that'll make you cry. So that's why. Well, in the best of both worlds, you find a humorous man with money like you. Uh uh, I got one of them too. <laughs> you are like the fifth guest in the road to try to come on here and claim Accuse I got you some of money. money. L. Duncan, if I had much money. I would not be in a trap. Like some fancy cameras. I would not. No, these are. That's where the money goes. <laughs> trying to invest that's in my fair. career. That's fair. Exactly. Well, L. Duncan, this has been another rendition of the Black Excellence Spotlight. <laughs> we got to make sure we lace you with some of these dope uh, please. fabrics and I things of that nature. Get your husband a hat or something. Yeah. Shout out to your baby. Thank you. How old you say? I have a two and a half year old and a five month old. Two and a half year old, okay, and a five month old. Yep. All right, bet. We got some onesies that we so work. They definitely on. watch 85 South comedy. They do. Show. They sure do. Oh man, ain't no telling what they might say. Right. <laughs> what okay. is it? Ooh, who's gonna win the finals? Yeah. You're doing this to me. He gonna do it. It's just, I feel like it's gonna be really hard to beat the Nets in a best of seven. Nets so. Writers. Possibly. I'm gonna foolishly say that this is the year that the Jazz finally figure this shit out. Uh-uh, nah, nah. It has to be the year, it has to be the year. I don't even like their name. They the Utah Jazz. Don't even black people even live in Utah. I know. Who the fuck playing the Jazz? <laughs> Donovan Mitchell. Donovan Mitchell uh, plays on the... Hell, <laughs> <laughs> Duncan, do you have some Crocs? I don't have Crocs. You a mom. You definitely should get some Crocs. No, my daughter has some. You, I'm telling you, okay. man. They unlock a, a different part of your personality. Okay. 
What part is that? Um, comfort. Comfort. Yeah, these are very, these are wildly uncomfortable. Really? Yeah, I only wore them, I only wore them because I was trying to like look cool for the show. You are cool though. Your name I was is... like, let me put on my Fashion Nova pants. <laughs> Your name and... is L. Duncan though. Thank you. You, you good. Is that cool? Yeah. Even Your though people gonna... call me Ellie all the time? It's Ellie. All the time, I get it. Ellie Duncan. I'm a big fan, Ellie. I'm like, thank you. You obviously watch me on mute. <laughs> if you've never heard, I say my name every show. Do the Spanish people call you Elie? Oh my gosh, all the time. <laughs> Elie, all the time. <laughs> Hello, Miss Elie. <laughs> or I get accused of being, I'm black, but I get accused of being everything, right? Racially ambiguous. Really? Is whatever. And so I'll do these talkbacks, like, you know, one of our Hispanic reporters, you know, and I believe that if you know how to say it, you should say it, right? Like, it's Pedro. That's how you say his name. Pedro. Maybe. Is it Pedro. Like, uh, his name's Pedro. So I say it, and then immediately it's like, I knew you were one of us, but equals for life. I'm like, no. <laughs> but actually black. Really? I'm like, but really. <laughs> so yeah, that's what I do. I, I, the Spanish chick be like, really? Yeah. Really? <laughs> You don't look black. <laughs> you sure you black? You like this guy? Blackity black black. I'm, Militant black. I'm so black. I'm talking about Vaseline for lotion black. Like comet in the crevices of your elbow black? Comet? What you know about that? Hello. What? Did I just put you on some game? Comet? My grandmother used to scrub comet on my father's elbows and knees so that they wouldn't turn too black. That is crazy and child abuse, L. Duncan. Probably. <laughs> they ain't gonna look at her now because she's no longer with us. Damn. So we're good. It's no, I just meant like super black, L. Duncan. Like, like your parents drinking at your birthday party black. I'm talking about having to go to bed. Like, Y'all gonna go to bed. This is a grown folk party. Now. It's 5 p.m. Exactly. <laughs> Turn they the lights out. And all that shit. <laughs> but look, I, like I said, you know exactly where we are. Right, yeah. Right here at the I'm 85 you. South Show. You more than welcome, right. bro. Yeah. More than welcome. <laughs> right here. You can come and host all that. Do an L. Duncan segment in the trap. 85 South Show. We out of here. <laughs> man, shoot some pictures, man.